Melbourne to talk about it. And um, <laughs> yes, boss, you know, that, that's what Mandy was to, to, to Andre, you know, it's like one of the boys in wrestling. Yes, boss, where you need boss. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. And it was, it was, it was, it was a very cool experience. I love that. So much. I, I don't think I ever, no, I definitely didn't. I never saw Andre in person, but uh, he, you know, I think the last mania appearance he made was seven. And then the past uh, pretty shortly after that, but I always wanted to see Andre live, but you know, I never got to just, you know, time. Uh, we all born at different times where, you know, we wish we could see certain things, but unfortunately uh, we were not born in time. Well, uh, you, you become older me as old as me, you get a few <laughs> options yeah. here. Cause I, I <laughs> and, and, and frankly, I didn't really get to see him as prime at, uh, it was his later years, but he yeah. was still, but also though, he was probably the most well-known then because of the WWF marketing machine back in the day. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Triller TV real fast. Sure. Triller, Triller TV, formerly known as Fight TV, uh, started back in 2012, for those that don't know, and broadcasted the first Wrestle Kingdom in the United States in 2015. So mm -hmm. for those that may not know and may be living under a rock, can you explain and tell us a little bit more about Triller TV? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm a co-founder of the company. Um, and well, um, my part of it is, is the other co-founders are all, uh, you know, um, engineers and, and, and technically driven. Um, so in 2012, they start building the technology for a company. Um, and I didn't get involved till like 2014 when um, actually, was, I don't want to be egotistical about this, but it was, it was my idea for them to do live streaming programming. Um, oh. Prior to that, we were doing all uh bod programming tape programming on the platform um and informally uh, it was known as flipsa initially mm -hmm. and then uh, we came with name fight but the very first event we ever did live and looking back what a crazy wild event we picked to do the first one live was wrestle kingdom nine live from tokyo we had jim ross as a what was one of the announcers there and then uh, we did um or the, throughout the uh, most of 2015 uh, we did test events with um, um, TNA, uh, Ring of Honor. Um, we did some bull riding, did mm. a couple other events and stuff. And then we went full force in 2016. And that's when we changed the name to Fight and then started doing all the events. But yes, um, uh, Wrestle Kingdom was the first event and doing it live. And of course, it's during the middle of the night with all mm -hmm. the time differences and stuff. It worked out pretty well. And then, of course, in the first year of our company, Jim Ross was a um, spokesperson for our company, which um, fortunately I had worked with Jim when I was at WCW and had built a good relationship with him. And probably one of the smartest things we did was have him involved because he gave us a, um, you know, seal of approval um, that people knew, okay, well, Jim's behind us. Uh, it must be a good thing. And that worked both from uh, uh, programmers as well as uh, fans. And, um, so Jim was very valuable to us in that first year, and um, we really appreciate him working with us at that time. Yeah, I remember hearing, um, I think it was Jer uh, Jeff Jarrett on his podcast say he was a little bit uh, involved with that as well, because I think it was. Oh, actually, uh, so so yeah, I, I really didn't tell you the whole story there. Oh, yeah. So I, I worked with Jeff at TNA. Mm -hmm. I actually first met Jeff when I worked at WCW, and um, we always got along well. And that's when he was launching Global Force Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had worked a deal with New Japan to get the uh, the pay-per-view rights. And, of course, my experience has been in pay-per-view <laughs> dates back to the 80s. And um, so I, I did the clearances with him for uh, in-demand, you know, cable, direct TV, and Dish Network. And then <laughs> that's where I, you know, came up with the idea of, well, let's stream it um on this new platform called flips and um he supported that and we went away and it worked out very well we did a very good buy rate on that event considering <laughs> we went from zero so seeing what you've seen from you know the way triller started with just one um live broadcasting to now if you just go on the front home page the top like what's coming up there is a laundry list, not only including, you know, European football or soccer, depending on uh, where you are in the world, uh, bare knuckle fighting, uh, Josh Barnett's blood sport. You have AEW this past Sunday. You have, you know, so many amazing things like TNA is coming up as well. 
from where you guys started to where y'all are now, obviously now under the trailer TV banner, how, like, how massive is this? Like, did you guys see it growing the way it did? Because like you said earlier, you kind of started with, you know, things that mean people may not have been that interested in, but you guys were trying it like bull riding, which I've covered bull riding multiple times. And that is just, if people have never seen it live, watch it. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Uh, but and then obviously, you know, the MMA world of it, the grappling, the boxing, the pro wrestling. Did you see it going the way it is now and like seeing how big it is has gotten? Well, I wasn't stupid enough uh, to say, it. I mean, I, <laughs> I thought I had a chance here. Um, right. I had a lot of people tell us, ah, no, you're going to be out of business six months. You, you can't make it work. But I, I didn't have a choice. I wanted to make it work. I think I could. Fortunately, we had a really good team of people. We have superior technology. Um, we knew that there was really no limits. Um, but we're now going beyond anything I could have dreamed on because we're getting beyond combat sports. Mm -hmm. uh, the boxing and wrestling MMA um, works in the business models that we had initially. But as you know, we're now working, like you said, European football and, and soccer. Uh, we've done basketball. We're looking at some baseball projects. Uh, we're looking at multiple sports. And really, our next vision is to go into... Uh, become um, essentially a competitor of ESPN plus. Um, and so uh, taking a step back here, explain a little bit, the reasons we went from fight to trailer TV is really twofold. Um, one fight is obviously perfect for wrestling, boxing, MMA, mm -hmm. but it's a little tougher on soccer. And we actually even had written in contracts with, uh, uh, with uh, one of our soccer uh, promoters is that um uh, Okay, you can call it fight this year, but next year uh, we have the rights to lead the deal if you don't change the name of your company. Ow. Um, but that wasn't the only reason, um, right. the, the the fight. But so um, it made sense for us to change the name to fight to something else. Uh, the reason was the Trillers because we had been acquired almost three years ago by a company named Triller, who is in the midst of going public here, hopefully – as soon as July 4th, uh, they've already announced a merger they've done with a company that is public. So, I mean, it, it's happening. And obviously, uh, having a brand called Triller TV is going to help with you know, just recognition when you're going public. So, between the the fact that I'm going public and, and for the fact that we need another name other than Fight, it's working out pretty well. Um, <laughs> nobody likes to make changes. It's not easy, but we made this change. Um in uh, December of uh, 2023 and um, seems to be doing well. It's frankly, it's going smoother than I thought it would <laughs> in some ways. And um, cause you know, obviously I had a lot of uh, affinity toward the name fight since I was there from the beginning and it's a, it's a good name. Um, you know, four, four white letters on a red background might be reminiscent of something else. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the Triller is working out well, too. And, of course, there is another Triller uh, social media app, too, which I see a lot of big things for in the immediate future. So I think they'll go hand-in-hand -hand and help each other uh, grow. Yeah, I, I mean, I love using the Triller app, especially when it comes to, like, I mean, like I said, as we're recording, this past Sunday was AEW Double or Nothing. I like to catch up with the GCW or watch it live uh, through the app, which I think is amazing. And it really helps. I mean, you, plus, when you go into wrestling, there's so much other options as well, because there are, I mean, even with them, like combat sports and pro wrestling, there are so many different companies that people either haven't heard of or are just, you know, obviously learning about for the first time that it is so much easier to process it all and watch it all. Um, I've said it multiple times to so many people now that if I was growing up now as a kid, I wouldn't leave the house. I wouldn't have any friends that weren't, you know, on the internet or anything because I would just be watching pro wrestling uh, from all around the world on a regular basis because everything is streamed and I could just be watching, you know, you have, you know, MMA type stuff as well, because again, it's all streaming out there. It's all right there for you. Why would you need to go outside? Well, and if you do go outside, you can watch it on your mobile. Right, everybody's exactly. got a damn phone now too. So <laughs> yeah, it, 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 we, you really get the market. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I, I do remember playing, you know, a lot of basketball in snow in my, my neighbor's driveways and stuff like that. And I don't think kids do enough of that kind of stuff either. So, no, that's true. Uh, it, it's, it's, um, 
Yeah, because everything you're saying about you know our video platform, people are positively saying about video games. You know, kids, yeah. you know, are playing video games you know, 10, 12 hours a day. Well, um, you know, uh, there's not that much exercise involved in that because you know, uh, you know, all my buddies I grew up with, we all did all the you know from we were little kids playing out in the street and playing in you know in, in the driveways, basketball and playing football in the yards and stuff like that. Well, we were all athletes later too. You know, we all played high school ball and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and and some of us played college and in in um, yeah. So um, there's something to be said for those days too. True. Although I mean, with the video games, we're seeing esports that rise is you know becoming uh, massive, and then you know we're seeing so much when it comes to let's say just video game competitions in general. Like you know, oh, yeah. If, if anybody I, wants to get schooled on playing Madden, go watch Snoop or tro- go try to play Snoop at Madden. <laughs> From what I hear, he just murders everybody. He's absolutely insane on. It. I, I can't believe how uh, <laughs> I can't believe competitive video games and, and audiences for video games yeah, still still escapes me. I'd rather watch a good old-fashioned boxing match or a wrestling <laughs> show. So. It is funny to try to explain to somebody that uh, people pay to watch other people play video games, and those people playing video games can win millions of dollars. Definitely something I didn't see as a, as a kid growing up. <laughs> right, yeah. My, my video game experience started with Pong and ended with Pong. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to games. I, I have three kids, and never, none of them really got into the games. They played a little bit, but not much, yeah. Yeah, so. and now there's so many bars that have uh, all the video games in it that you just pay to go play a bunch of old video games, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I do. I do. That was a big thing in college, playing Space Invaders and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you mentioned that you're retiring uh, this year. What kind of, where did the thought process come for that? And, you know, I guess, you know, let's start there. How did uh, how did it come to be that you are finally going to hang, hang the jersey up, if you will? Well, I'm getting old and tired. Uh, <laughs> That's everybody. I, I turned 66 this summer. Oh. Um when it, it just things fell in place here so when we were acquired by uh triller uh three years ago i signed a three-year contract and uh, initially just wanted to do it one year i go let's do three years because that takes me to 66 that sounds like a good time to retire mm-hmm. uh, my wife's actually a few years older than me um, i'm expecting my first grandchild this summer i said no this is the right time to do it uh, a lot of peer pressure almost all my college and high school buddies are retired or in the midst mm-hmm. of retiring right now and um slow down now i can't go cold turkey i'm gonna still uh, be a, a, a senior advisor here to the company uh so i will be involved a little bit but the day-to-day operations of uh, of, of running a company like this um uh, we got a very capable person coming in to take my position here which we'll probably announce in the next week or so mm-hmm. and um you know uh did i do everything i want to do I always want to do more, right. uh, but it has been good and we've had success with there. So it's, it's been very fulfilling. I mean, I've been in the workforce for over 45 years um, and usually at a senior level in most companies since I got out of college back uh, initially out in 1980, so I guess 44 years. And um, so it, it's been, it's been a good career. Uh, I've had some great experiences and, you know, I, I, I've worked in television sports this whole time. And, you know, what could be more cool than that, you know, as a, as a job. So it is, it, it's always been a job is job that people's envious and sports to me and, 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 and the opportunities I've had and people I've met. Um, yeah, it's been pretty interesting. It's been fun. What are, let's say three of some of your favorite moments throughout your entire, like you just said, over 40 year career. Oh, well, in addition to working in pro wrestling prior to working on Triller, uh, I also worked in motorsports for about, That's right. I guess, a total of about five, 10 years. Uh, I've done monster truck racing. I've done supercross racing. I've done I've done indoor snowmobile racing. Uh, I, cool. I, I I produced the very first uh, time Amy did uh, in, um, a backflip on a snowmobile indoors. Nuts. Now that 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 that's one of those bucket list things. Come on, who comes up with that kind of crazy stuff? So I've actually done those. Um, uh, you know, 
WrestleMania three, I, we we're just talking about, but that's definitely one of my highlights. You know, that was way early in my career, but wow, that was just something. You